Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for joining us today for our education session around the latest overview of Power BI updates through quarter one and, and, and Q2 of 2023. So there's a lot of innovation going on at Microsoft these days, especially in the Power BI and Azure Analytics product groups. So in this ongoing series, we comb through all of these latest updates and provide you an overview of the most important features that we feel are relevant to common enterprise analytics scenarios and deployments. And we do this in the form of a live presentation, as well as a blog that we have pre-recorded um, many demos for each feature. So be sure to take a look at that as well. So the agenda for today is to talk about why we're here and what the series is about. And then we look at the different updates across three user groups. We have updates for consumers, updates for people who are developing reports and, and developing data sets in Power BI Desktop. Uh, we also have updates for admin users, as well as people that are managing content in the Power BI service. Uh, we'll then wrap up with some updates that we're excited about and open it up for questions at the end. All right, so my name is David Kettinger. I've been with Preferred Strategies for seven and a half years and spent most of that time as a data analytics consultant, helping our customers deploy Power BI with our quick launch solution. And I really started using Power BI when it came out back in 2014, 2015, when I was in grad school. And since then, I've really been in the, in, in the platform every day. And it's just crazy to think that we're already almost celebrating the 10-year anniversary of, of this tool. So Preferred Strategies is headquartered in the San Francisco Bay Area. And our main focus is bridging the gap between Power BI and the Azure analytics ecosystem and, and bridging that gap between your corporate data sources such as ERP systems, CRM systems, and, and financial planning systems, to name a few. And today, all of our demos will be quick, uh, connected to our quick launch for ERP solutions. So that's what we use when we're, when we're uh, connecting to our data sets. So the last time we presented this series to you was back in November, and I was hoping to summarize all of the updates since then in one session, but there were just too many cool things to show off and too many groundbreaking announcements over the past seven months. So I decided to break this up into two sessions to make it a little bit more digestible. So part one today, we'll cover the updates through April and, and introduce you to Fabric, which is the new analytics platform in Azure and give you some important announcements and dates around that. And then in part two, we'll be covering the May and June updates as well as digging deeper into the Fabric platform and what that means for enterprise analytics. So you can see here, this is the Power BI release plan that you can download into your tenant as an app from the App Store and start to track these updates. And you can see over the course of you know, Q1 of 2023, there's quite a bit, including 42 features that were shipped in March alone. So quite a few updates uh, in March and, and really the continuous update model that Power BI has just means that they're they're constantly updating the Power BI service and the Power BI desktop and the, and the Power BI mobile app. So there's a lot to cover and we're gonna go ahead and dive in. So the first section we're gonna cover is the updates for consumers. So way last year, Power BI announced that it was switching the application accent coloring from the yellow Power BI color to this greenish teal color in order to make it more accessible for people with dis disabilities and colorblindness. But coincidentally, it also matches the new color scheme for the Fabric platform announced last month. And to show you that, I'll just come into a browser and come up to the Power BI service. And you can see now everything has this green coloring. And if you have this Fabric preview turned on in your tenant, then you might have already seen some other 
um, interesting things, such as if you refresh, you'll see the fabric icon in the middle of the screen instead of the Power BI. If you come down here to the Power BI button at the bottom left-hand corner, you see that you have other fabric assets or tools um, that you can explore as well. And we'll touch on this later in the admin section of our, uh, of our presentation. All right, so the next one I wanted to show you was the ability to subscribe to personalized views of reports. So this is a pretty cool feature. Before you had to subscribe to the standard version that was uh, saved by the person who published the report, but now we can make some personalizations to filters and slicers and, and um, some other aspects of the report. So to show you this, I'm gonna go to another browser and come to Power BI. And we're gonna go to our profit forecast here. So if I want to, let's say I'm the, the regional manager for our Eastern region. So I can switch that to East here. And maybe instead of the dimension that's used in this visual, I wanna personalize this visual a bit. So I can change this to maybe look at our, our different product groups instead of customers. So I can switch that up and you can see the dimensions changed here. And now if I want to subscribe to this, I can come up here to subscribe to report and come to add a new subscription. And now you'll see there's a include my changes option here, which will then um, send, send those changes that you made in a, uh, an emailed report that you can set the frequency up as well in this dialogue. So I'm going to come to save here and just to show you what that looks like in email, uh, you can see here's my sales personalized summary. And now you can see you can have these, um, these updates reflected in a screenshot of the report as well as a, a link to open up this interactive report in the Power BI service. And the last one I have for consumers is the enhanced integration between Power BI and, and PowerPoint. So let's show you how you can set that up. When this feature was originally shipped, you had the ability to put static report images into your PowerPoint presentation. And they later made it possible to put full dynamic reports in your page. But with the latest updates, you can actually just put single visualizations in your PowerPoint presentation. And that, I think, I think it uh, makes it a little less busy and a little more focused and allows people to make their presentations more interactive and, and, and more conversational as you dig into uh, the data and explore the insights available. So to do this, you need to have the Power BI plugin for PowerPoint installed, and then you're gonna go to insert and click the Power BI button here, and then you get a little widget asking you to paste the URL from Power BI. So I'm gonna go ahead and come out to my Power BI service and find the report that I want to, um, to embed a visual from. In this case, I wanna embed this, this matrix here. So all I need to do is come over to the more options button and click share and then PowerPoint. And now you can see I got this URL that I can copy and then I can come back over to my presentation and I can paste it and insert. So now I can resize this visual and add other content, uh, content to the slide. And you'll notice that this is now just an interactive uh, uh, visual like it would be in the Power BI service. So I can do things like drill down and explore um, and answer questions as they, they arrive in, 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 the, um, in the presentation. So this is pretty cool. You can do things like format it and give it an outline. But one thing I will call out here is that, you know, we have month to date, quarter to date, year to date, but, but through when, right? So you need to add, make sure you're adding context to your slide. Now, the only way you can really do this or, or tell when it was run is if you click on this little funnel button up here which then shows you all the filters applied, um, including the slicers that the report, um, uh, that the visual used from the report we, uh, we, we embedded. So it's not quite that intuitive. So I, I recommend just putting a, uh, a title in here to, to, to give that context to your users. 
All right, so moving along, that, can, that completes the consumer part. So let's move on to the report designers and developers section. So the first one we have here is the quick measure suggestions with Copilot. And this really builds on the existing quick measures feature that was introduced a few years ago. But now a, it's uh, utilizing the natural query technology that Power BI has branded Copilot. And that's going to automatically generate DAX code based on natural language input uh, into the tool. So let's go ahead and show you that in action. I'll do that in the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to come in here to my sales analysis report here. And you can see I have some cards set up breaking out my sales total totals. And what if I want to add a sales amount uh, measure that's filtered to my online channel? Let's show you how you can do that. So over here, I'm going to click on my sales table. And you'll notice I have some options up here. One of them is the quick measure. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now you can see that I have the option to use the uh, the, the old methodology, which is there's these predefined patterns that you can then drag fields in to configure. But I could also come here to the suggestions with Copilot option. And now just using natural language, I can just say total sales amount for online. And you can see as a type, Power BI is recommending some options for me based on the data model it's scanning. So I'm going to choose the first one here and just hit generate. And this is a really cool feature because the DAX learning curve can be pretty steep. But now you can see that with Copilot and then the uh, generative AI model that they're using, you can auto generate code. And really this experience is, is going to be built all throughout the Fabric platform, which we'll touch on again at the end here. But let's say that, you know, this is using customer parent. Maybe that's not the table that I wanted to pull my pull my channel field from, but really I wanted to pull it from the, the standard customer table. And I can just click add here, and that's going to create this measure as if I would have coded the DAX myself and I can edit it further or I could just rename it and start to use it in my report. So I'm going to call this uh, sales or let's call it online sales amount. And then when I save that, you'll see that it's actually saving this back to my data model over here and to my sales table. And I can use that just like any other measure. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this card up here and just drag it over a bit. And we'll go find that new field, which is the online sales amount, and just drop it in here. And now you'll see that you know, using this new Copilot feature quickly was able to accomplish uh, writing a new DAX measure. All right, so let's keep moving on here. So the next update I have is uh, a pretty big improvement to the small multiple visualization feature that was introduced a year or two ago. And I'm going to show you this as a demo as well. So we'll come back over to our sales uh, scenario analysis. And I'll click on the small multiples tab here. So I have a trend chart here broken out by my product group. So before, what if I want to dig in a little bit deep, deeper and break this out by another dimension? Pretty easy to do. I can come up here to the, uh, to the visualizations pane. And I can drop a field into my small multiples field well here. And now you can see it's broken out that trend by my different sales reps. But you'll notice that it's all sharing the same access. And this was a pretty big limitation because if you have sales reps, in this case, that have large, much larger numbers than others, then it kind of it's harder to interpret or read the results for the other sales reps. But now I can come in to the format uh, option in the visualizations pane and I can come to my Y axis. And in here, you'll notice there's a shared y-axis toggle switch. I could turn that off, and you'll see each one has their own axes now, and I can also scale to fit this now. So now you'll see that each one is scaled based on the maximum and minimum ranges of each sales rep. So now it's much more useful. So I just wanted to, to highlight that because that's a pretty pretty big enhancement. 
Okay, so let's move on to talk a little bit about the new parameter feature and the new ability to create these dynamic slicers within your report. So again, we'll come back to our Power BI desktop file and we'll come over here uh, to the sales scenario analysis just to highlight what you can do with these new parameters. So in this particular example, I have a parameter for my is really a range of values and if i if i click on the modeling tab you'll notice that i have this option to create a new parameter around a numeric range which is what the sales growth slicer is using or a field which i'll show you here in a second but here you can just adjust this and you can see that you can do the scenario analysis based on in this case uh, your projected sales growth so that's pretty cool and you can also do things like create dynamic measures and dynamic dimensions in your visuals. So here, as I click, I can change this from quantity order to maybe look at the average order value. I could also look at it by channel in this case or by product group. But what if I wanted to add another layer here based upon what the user selects in this, in this dimension uh, slicer? So I can just copy and paste this and we'll just... Uh, drag this out so we can see it better and now you'll see it's using the same parameter value for dim which is really just dax code that it auto auto creates for you as well but in this case now i have this um, ability to show values of the selected field from the parameter that uh, parameter slicer i copied it from so now you can see with the different product groups that make up uh, the different values of the product group and I can further uh, slice this report by that right so if I change this now I'm seeing my, my channels reflected and again my regions so that's a way you can just build more interactivity into your Power BI reports for your consumers uh, the next thing I wanted to touch on was the update around the optimization ribbon and how you can en enhance the report authoring experience as well as the consumer experience. So to show you that, I'll come back over to Power BI Desktop and we have a page over here that looks similar except it has a few new features added to it. So the optimized ribbon uh, lives up here in the top uh, menu section and you'll see some, some, some new options. So we have the ability to pause visuals and refresh visuals. So if you're working on a report that has a, is connected to a very large data set or has, you know, you're, 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 you're troubleshooting some long running DAX queries and you don't wanna wait every time you, you interact with the report or choose a new slicer, you can choose to pause the visuals here, which is pretty handy. Uh, you can also choose to refresh them on demand and you notice that you also have some optimization presets here. So if I choose query reduction, that's going to turn off the cross highlighting and cross filtering of my of my visuals. So as I click on a value, you can see it's not going to update my other um, my other uh, charts on the page. So if you're worried about performance, that could be a way to optimize that. Um, you could also turn on full interactivity, or you can even set your customized set of settings or preferences uh, based on what, what, you, what you want, uh, which I thought was a pretty cool update too. I'll turn this back to interactivity so we get full interactivity. Uh, you'll notice the performance analyzer has been added to this. This is not a new feature, but it just has a new home where you can, you can record all of the interactions that your uh, report makes and the, time, and the load times of each of those if you're doing some performance testing. And the last thing here is pretty cool. It's the apply all slicers button. So a lot of our, our customers use a, a, a bunch of slicers on their reports. And sometimes that can slow down the cons consumer experience as they update um, each slicer. It sends out queries to all the visuals and all the slicers on the page. So now once you apply one of these new buttons and I have that on the on the page already and I click around you'll see that as I click these slicer values it doesn't update the um, the the options and it even has a not yet applied notification on the slicer and but if I come over here to apply all slicers you'll see then that it updates and actually applies those um, you also have the option to clear slicers here so if I clear all slicers 
you'll see that now I, um, I have, oops, sorry about that. I have um, my visualizations again, but you'll notice that one of the nuances is if you create this dynamic, uh, this dynamic parameter slicer, it needs filter context from the slicer it was using to drive it. So in this case, it needs a, a region or channel or product group uh, to be selected in order to, to um, support that visual. So if I come back in here, again, I choose my values and then I choose all, apply all slicers. You'll see now that it's, it's working as design. All right, so that's how you can optimize the report development experience as well as the experience for consumers with the new optimized ribbon. Okay, so the next thing I have here is the ability to conditionally format visual elements based on text string fields, which is a new feature. Traditionally, you were only allowed to do it on numeric fields. So this is a pretty cool update. You used to have to do some fancy footwork in DAX in order to accomplish this by creating new DAX measures that define the value for the, the 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 text field and assigned it to a color. But now we can um, we can do that through the user interface. So I have an example of this. Come back over here and come to conditional formatting. I have a chart here broken out by my, my product groups and my product subgroups. So let's say we want to highlight one of these product groups here. Let's go ahead and come to the format visual and under columns, you'll notice this FX button where I can set up my conditional formatting. So if I come in here to the format style and come into rules and notice that I have an ability to choose what field it's based on. In this case, I want to base it on the product group. So I'll choose product group. And now you'll notice that I have the ability to enter my text value here as part of my um, as part of my conditional format rules. So if I come in here and say, let's color our mobile group red to highlight that, I can choose okay. And now I have that conditional formatting based on my text string, which is pretty neat. Alrighty, so moving right along. The next one I want to show you is how you can really make your formatting more professional in your Power BI reports using the new visual container format options around subtitles, dividers, spacing, and padding settings. So we'll open up a slightly different report here. We have our channel review report, and you can see I've already done this for one of the charts here. So I have my, my, my uh, subtitle turned on, and this is a pretty cool feature because you can add more context to your your data visualizations. And I think the more context, the better to make it easier to digest and understand your visualizations. So if I come here to this map uh, visual, I'll show you how to set this up. I'll come back over to my format and I'll come to general and I'll come to title. And if I scroll down on this, uh, this excuse me, this title uh, card, I can turn on my subtitle. So now I can, you know, format my subtitle here and you can see I have one which says darker green means higher sales. So again, I'm giving that context to my users and I can turn on uh, the divider. Maybe I want to, uh, you know, change some settings here. I have the ability to do that. I also can change the setting uh, for spacing so I can match my other chart. That's looking better. And then you also have the new ability to change the prop, the, the padding. Uh, so if I wanted to add some padding elements around the, the from the container to the visual elements, I can do that via this new padding setting, which is pretty cool to really dial in the the uh, appearance of, of of your visualizations here. Okay, so two more to go. We have the update to the page navigator visual, and this uses the navigation button that was introduced a year or two ago, but again, now it gets a, a bit of a uplift um, from a usability perspective. So I'll show you how you can do this with um, another Power BI desktop report here. So in this case, uh, let's say I have a, um, 
a report called the sales summary and i want to create some inter some dynamic navigation elements within this page so using again this uh this button type which um is in the buttons you can see navigator here and you have page navigator and bookmark navigator so the page navigator is over here on the left where i can switch between my different pages and dynamically choose what people are able to, uh, what, what pages people are able to navigate through. Uh, I can also use the bookmark navigator to maybe change the chart types, um, such as, you know, switching over here. But uh, yeah, before, in order to get this to work, you had to either hide or unhide your pages in your, in your report in order to get them to show up in this bookmark uh, navigator. But if I come over here, so let's say my weekly analysis page and I unhide it, uh, I have a new ability to add this to my report navigator, which is a little bit more intuitive, I believe. So if I click on this navigator button and I come to this new format card here called pages, I have the ability to show uh, certain pages. So if I want to add that weekly analysis, instead of doing the unhide and hide option, I can just come in here and toggle that on. And now that's part of my, my navigation visual. So I thought that was a, that was a, a cool highlight, uh, a cool update worth highlighting. And that takes us to our last update for report designers, which is around the smart narrative feature that's built into the header icons for every visual. So this uses the similar uh, technology for um, natural language generation around creating written summaries of your visualizations. So if I come here to uh, my, my channel review again, you'll notice that now I have this new option that's in the form of this smart narrative icon at the top of each visual. And if I click on that, you'll see it gives me this written summary, right? So this is pretty cool. It can expose insights that maybe you didn't as the report developer that uh, could help your consumers. So retail accounted for 65% of the sales amount. That's a pretty interesting insight. Uh, let me show you how you can turn this on. So if, if I click on that visual and I come back over to my format pane here, I can choose header icons. And now I have this new icons card and in there, I can either choose to turn on or off my smart narrative. And so you can do this for uh, your, your different visualizations to again, add, add, add a little bit um, more context and, and more insight to your reports. All right, so that concludes that section of the presentation. So we'll wrap up with our updates for admins. And this is a, uh, this is a pretty cool ones here uh, for, uh, for this installment. So the first one I have is a pretty big one around the ability to use paginated reports in the Power BI Pro workspaces or using a Power BI Pro license. This was traditionally a premium feature. And with the latest updates, it really allows companies to start utilizing paginated reports alongside their interactive Power BI reports despite whether or not they have a premium capacity or use premium per user licensing. So to show you that, I'm gonna come over to my uh, Power BI service and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, come over here to my JDE analytics workspace. So I'll come in here and choose that. And you'll notice I have a few different types of reports indicated by these little icons you can see i have an interactive report and then i can hover over this one i have a paginated report and this is an income statement so if i want to move this paginated report from a premium workspace denoted by this diamond up here i can just choose the save a copy option and then we'll move this into a pro workspace not in a premium capacity so i'm going to choose the general ledger workspace and then we'll choose save and then if we go to that report, you'll notice that I can use this in this in this pro workspace. And it gives me this ability to have our traditional, highly defined formatting style, like operational and financial statement reports, right? It has the drillability into the hierarchies and um, 
and get, gives your gives your users different ways to view the data. But just to show you, um, this general workspace is, is not doesn't have your diamond premium um, workspace, and you can also see that based on clicking on the workspace settings, and you can see the license mode that's enabled for this workspace. Okay, so the next one up is the ability to email report subscriptions to external users. And this is a premium feature, um, but it's worth pointing out because you know a lot of times you have um, users that need to see data from your your company, such as you know suppliers or customers. And maybe they don't exist in your Azure Active Directory as a guest user. So two things I want to show you is how you can set this up and then also how you control who and if people can use this in your organization. So to show you that, I'll come to my uh, Power BI service here. And if I come over to uh, this tab here, I'm in the admin portal over here. And if you click on tenant settings, you can scroll down and you'll see a new tenant setting under the export sharing where um, you can control this. So here you can see users can send email subscriptions to external users and you can choose to enable this for the entire organization or you can specify certain security groups or you can turn it off completely. So that's how you can control it from an admin side, just to show you this in action. If I come over here to a subscribe report here and add a new subscription, I can type in a, um, an email that is outside of my domain. And once I do that, you'll see it gives you a notification saying that the subscribe users will receive the report based on the permissions for data that you're you're seeing as the person setting up the subscription. So you want to be mindful of that. It also gives you a notification that uh, you're going to share it with people outside of your organization. And once you do that, you can set it, save it. And now those people will receive uh, the, the, the report via email. All right. So the last one before the big reveal here is the new way to upload Power BI and Excel files into your Power BI workspaces. So if you've been around the tool a while, you'll notice that uh, there's been a bit of change to the user interface. And just to show you that, let me find a workspace. So I'll come in here to a workspace. And before, you'd have to come down here to this sort of get data experienced in the Power BI service. Once you clicked on that, you get a screen that asks you, where do you want to update your, upload your file from? And you can choose local file from computer or, or SharePoint. But now that feature has been moved into this uh, sort of top, top navigation section of the workspace. And you can see you can upload based upon those same options. But another cool thing about uh, this is if you choose OneDrive or SharePoint uh, to upload your, your report here, it'll actually sync those changes back to that shared drive so that you don't have to publish or upload the report every time you make a change. And I think the updates usually sync around every hour or so. Uh, so if you need more, uh, if you need to update your report sooner than that, you, you'll have to come do this manual version of the upload. But just wanted to point that out as a, as a pretty cool new feature as well. All right, so that takes us to last but not least, the ability to enable the new Fabric platform for your tenant. So before I show you how you can do that, and what that means, I wanted to just kind of introduce you to Fabric as some of you may or may not be familiar with it. So Microsoft's Fabric platform was announced last month and really it's the new end-to-end -end cloud analytics platform for Microsoft that includes a lot of tools that have already been around in the Azure analytics ecosystem, as well as a few new ones. You have your data factory and data engineering for your ETL and transformation processes. You have uh, your Synapse related tool set, ones for data science. So building these machine learning and AI models over your data. Uh, you also have your traditional data warehousing abilities and the ability to 
uh, track streaming data, such as IoT device data through the Synapse real-time analytics. You have your BI layer, which is Power BI, of course, building your semantic models and visualizations over that. Uh, they have this new, new, new tool called Data Activator, which is a way to automate the data monitoring and... Uh, and, and, and enable you to trigger analytical and business processes based on that active real-time monitoring system. So this is a pretty cool feature that should really help businesses automate the ability to take action on their data. Now, what's, uh, what, what's cool about this, it's all connected to one data repository that is a data lake that that's now been called one lake and really i like to think of this um as a wheel and before um the these these tools were just never really integrated and, and they lacked adoption uh, so it's sort of like a broken wheel and each of these tools was sort of a spoke but they didn't have a centralized hub to connect them and this is where microsoft thinks this one lake can really be that centralized hub that provides one copy of the data to all the tools in the platform, eliminating the need for a lot of integration points, which you know is one of the biggest concerns for an IT and, and IT department or people trying to deploy uh, these analytical solutions in Azure. So, again, uh, stay tuned for the next iteration of this Power BI update series where we. We'll peel back the different layers of fabric and review what's available and preview and give you some timelines around that as well as discuss the readiness of these for enterprise anal analytics. Uh, just to give you a little bit of notice, this is what's available now. So you have some public preview options around the data factory and the Synapse tools as well as the tool I showed you today to create the DAX measures using the Copilot AI model, as well as one lake is available too. Uh, Power BI is still generally available. That, that's not going to change. Uh, and then you have some private preview for the data activator and then the Copilot experience built into these other fabric uh, tool sets, as well as the full Copilot for Power BI um, uh, features that ha haven't been released into the regular Power BI uh, GA version. Okay, so just a few announcements around this before I show you this in action. If you don't choose to opt out of the Fabric platform preview by July 1st, which is in a couple days, uh, you'll automatic, it'll automatically be turned on. And if you, do tur if you do opt out before then, it'll stay off until you enable it. So, also, uh, for customers running Power BI premium capacities through the PSQ uh, licensing, the new Fabric experiences will not affect your resource usage on those capacities before August 1st. So that gives you some time to try out these new these new features and, and, and tools, as well as monitor how they are impacting your uh, capacity uh, resource utilization. Uh, just another couple couple points to, to to make in June, which is already this is already these two have already uh, occurred. The Power BI administrator role has now been renamed the Fabric administrator to align with these, you know, changing scope of the of, of the platforms and the Power BI free licenses, which you may have turned enabled for users accessing premium content so they don't have to pay for a pro license. Those have been renamed to the Microsoft Fabric free licenses. So let me uh, let me show you what what this looks like. So if I come over here to a Power BI service, I'll come back to our our admin portal and our tenant settings. And the very top, you'll see the new Fabric preview option, and you can enable this or disable it. So again, if you disable this, then you won't have that preview turned on automatically. Um, if you enable it you can also choose to enable it for the entire organization or for specific security groups which is what we have set up so maybe you have some some super users some admin users or some pilot users that you want to test with you can you can use utilize this feature to to accomplish that um just to show you 
uh, the other two aspects. So I have this fabric test user here. And, and if I come over here to my um, roles and check out the admin roles, you'll notice if I scroll down that I now have uh, this fabric administrator. And this is again, what used to be called the Power BI administrator role. So just wanted to point that out to you as that's come up in, with a few of our customers. And um, the other thing I wanted to show you is the licensing type. So if I click on this user and go to licensing, you'll see that again, this, this, this Power BI free license is now called the Microsoft Fabric Free. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up with updates we're excited about. So obviously a lot of cool things going on with the Fabric platform, including this co-pilot for Power BI experience. And what I'm really excited about is not only the ability to have a co-pilot create code for you like DAX code or calculations. Um, you can create these narrative summaries, which we showed and, and, and enable users to ask questions about their data. But it also allows you to create your own generative AI model on top of your own data. So you have this chat GPT like experience on, on your own business data, which I, I think is going to be a huge a huge advancement and I'm excited to excited to get to demo that and, and, and try it out soon. Uh, the other thing that's exciting is the ability to finally get out of the old SSRS style desktop uh, development tool for paginated reports. And hopefully uh, by September of this year, there will be feature parity for creating paginated reports in the Power BI service just to give you guys some resources to check out. If you want to sign up for part two of our updates in 2023 thus far session, that's going to be on July 20th. And here's a link to register for that. I also have a blog that's super informative about how, you know, just in general about the Power Platform update and, and how Copilot's being built into the Power BI experience. Uh, you can watch the full Fabric launch event. It's about six hours of of content, but the demos will absolutely blow your mind. And I think it's worth it if you have the time. And then if you wanted to get that app for your to track the Power BI updates in your Power BI tenant, you can you can download it from this link. Okay, so before I open it up for questions, uh, I just wanted to point out a few sessions we're running in July. If we uh, excuse me, if you would like to get a little bit more hands-on with building interactive Power BI reports, we have a two-hour workshop with our training director, Michelle, who does a fabulous job in teaching the concepts of building out uh, these, these reports in the Power BI um, development experience. And um, it, we also have, again, the, the part two of these updates series that we do. And, we, and then you could also learn about how to leverage machine learning over ERP data with our CEO, Todd Wilson, who's doing this AI Now presentation on July 25th. So again, check out our events page on our website if you're interested in, in, in learning about any of that.